Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about what it's like when I sometimes lose my creative mojo and what I do to try and get it back again. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there who can relate to this. I often hear people saying that they've lost their sojo and they can't face picking up some sewing or doing anything creative. The things that they love doing. Sometimes there's just something there that stops us. That spark of energy for our sewing projects can just disappear and it can feel really disconcerting when this happens. I know I feel out of sorts when I lose my creative mojo. I don't know what to do with myself but I need to remind myself that it's totally normal. It happens to all of us and just like nature can't bloom fully all year round, neither can our creativity. So I turn to the small things in life and I focus on those. When I feel a lack of creativity, I try to fill myself up again. I try to recharge and gain that energy back by looking to other things. I don't push myself to pick up my sewing. I look at the world around me and I take inspiration from that. I don't put pressure on myself to get back to creating. That never works. I just spend time with my family and keep telling myself that the creativity will come back, the ideas will come. I just need to give myself that time to relax and gain that balance again. So sometimes the inspiration can just come out of nowhere. I just happened to be walking really local to where I live one day and then I saw these berries and I thought they looked interesting and then I noticed these tiny flowers and then suddenly a spark of inspiration hit me and I remembered my old flower press. And this is a flower press that I had since I was about six years old. And the last time I got it out was about six, seven years ago when I pressed some flowers from the garden of the house I used to live in and I used them to make some invitations for our wedding. So I found it and opened it up and I thought I'd take a look at what was left in the flower press. And I'm so glad that I did because there were some real treasures in there. Whenever I do need some inspiration, I nearly always turn to flowers. I just love flowers so much. And with the seasons changing now and we're well into autumn, it was so nice to look through the flower press and see some signs of spring again. And that gave me an idea that it would be really nice to create something using these pressed flowers something that I could hang on the wall and it would remind me of spring because spring is my favourite time of the year. So I had a little look through what was in the flower press and then I had another idea. So I remember that I had some glass frames the two larger ones are old ones, but I recently was given the hexagonal frame. It has a hook on the bottom. And I used to have a little hexagon flower in there, but I took it out and used it on another project. So it just got me thinking that maybe I could create something using the hexiform pieces. Maybe I could create some little flowers and possibly even use them in combination with the press flowers. So I just started playing around with 
fabric scraps and some of the tinier hexiform shapes and I began with the diamonds because I actually haven't used diamonds that much and they're a really lovely shape and something I want to explore more so I had a little play around with sewing some diamonds together At this point I still wasn't really sure what I was going to do with the diamonds, I was just playing around. So I decided to try the, the teeniest tiniest hexagons I've ever used. They are 4mm each side, they really are teeny teeny tiny. And I'm using them on my favourite Liberty print, it's called Chamomile. And the print, the flowers on this one are so tiny that you can actually still fussy cut them onto the tiniest hexagons ever. It is such a delicate, fine Liberty print. I really do love it. So I had to play around with those. My hexagons definitely aren't perfect. It's the first time I've ever tried such a tiny, tiny hexagon. And I need more practice, so they didn't quite turn out right. They are a little bit wonky but it was still enjoyable to play around with them. I decided to put the little flower into this tiny frame and just to hold it in place I used the Soline glue pen. There are so many uses for that glue pen <laughs> and this one just worked perfectly, it just holds it in place so it doesn't slip. back to my diamonds and using that little flower for inspiration I thought I would do some embroidery on the diamonds so I'm going to embroider a little flower that represents that one on each diamond For me the beauty of this is that it is just such a simple craft. You just need a needle, thread, fabric scraps and I'm using the hexiform shapes and you can just create something from just such few materials. I just love that I'm connecting with the craft of embroidery and the craft of English paper piecing, crafts which have been around for so many years and I really like the idea of moving them forward into the modern day but never forgetting where they came from either. When I was younger I never thought I was creative. 
I think that was because I'm not very good at drawing and such a lot of emphasis is put onto drawing and painting as the creative arts, especially when you're at school. So when I went on to college and university, I didn't study art and design, which is actually something I did want to do. But what I did study, I absolutely loved. And I don't have any regrets at all. I'm just glad that at this later stage of my life, I've found my passion and this really is my passion. I've been sewing all my life, but in these recent years, it's just really ignited a fire inside me and I just can't stop. Here I'm using the Hexiform Hex Petals and they're really nice because with a curved shape taking the paper out afterwards does make your seam allowance go a bit wonky and you have to mess around with it to get it nice and smooth again but with the Hexiform it just makes that so much easier. So these Hex Petals join together just as you would join a hexagon flower. You have a proper hexagon in the middle and then you join the petals around the edge exactly the same as you would for a hexagon flower. It's really easy and if you've never tried curves before these are a great shape to start with because you just have that curve at the top and the rest of it goes together really nicely. So I did the same thing here with the Solan glue pen, I just used a little dab of it to keep everything in place and I really like the look of using the patchwork flower alongside the press flowers. So I'm just going to add a scrap piece of Liberty fabric to the top so I can use that to hang it up on the wall. Another great project for using up scraps. For the larger frame, I decided to add this little motif that I made a really long time ago now and I just haven't known what to do with it, so I thought it would look really nice in the big frame with lots of pressed flowers all around it. hope you like this idea it was really fun to do and you don't need a flower press you can put your flowers in between some sheets of paper or tissue and use a big heavy book to press them just leave them for a couple of weeks and they'll come out really nicely I'm really pleased with these frames I think they're going to look really lovely on the wall thank you so much for watching this video I hope you feel inspired to create take care bye bye